the word semantic layer actually is uh, is a loaded word because uh, different vendors actually define it differently. So uh, let, let's we just go through it for a little bit and then we, we have a better understanding. Why semantic layers? Let's just go through. I'm not going to do this. Okay, so so how it started. So this one is an article by uh, Ben Stencil. Have you guys heard about Ben Stencil? This guy is uh, used to be the chief uh, data officer of Mode Analytics, and he's now the CTO of uh, Mode Analytics. The missing piece of the modern data stack. So we all talk about the modern data stack, but uh, this guy talks that tells us that there's something missing. Okay, next slide. So this one is uh, an issue on GPT GitHub. DBT should know about metrics. So this guy is a core powder of DBT. And he mentioned that we want to do something about metrics over here. I'm not sure if any of you have read this or followed this issue. Probably not. It's not that prominent, but uh, if you uh, sort of follow uh, DBT, um, you see this one is quite a big thing. Transform.co launched with 24.5 24 million uh, for a tool to query and view metrics out of data. 24.5 million for uh, nothing but a, an idea. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry if any of you guys transformed.co here. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, DBT Labs launched the DBT semantic layers. This one was October 18 last year. Any of you guys try it out? It's open, it's open. And you guys try it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect better. This one is DBT <laughs> Meetup Group, man. This is a new feature, exciting feature. Why no one has tried it out? Michael, you try it out. So at least there's one person I know that tried it out. <laughs> okay. So DBT Labs are quite transformed. <laughs> to enhance semantic layers. Just now, like, no, not like one month before, one month ago, the 9th of February, one month ago. Okay, next. So what is all this hoo-ha about semantic layers or matrix layers or what's different anyway? So someone call this matrix layer, someone call this semantic layers or what, what exactly is different? What's the different and what exactly is it anyway? So let's go through an examples to see what exactly is, why do we need a uh, semantic layer? So real examples. We have uh, FinTech. That guy is uh, boss, the name Bob. And that, that lady is uh, named Alice, uh, analyst, right? <laughs> so the, the, the Bob, the boss, asked her to get daily same day activation rate. What the hell is this? We don't know. Let, let's go through this. Uh, okay, this one is the definition. Users who sign up and activated their account on the same day. Why do you need this? You think about this, a FinTech, right? Um, you want people to sign up and then you do some like high effort activity like uh, upload their photos of NIC and stuff and activate it the same day. So uh, the board is really interested in this because they, they want to correlate, for example, if the new campaigns come out and then these numbers comes up, that means that, that campaign is successful, something along that line. Okay, next. So uh, we start with something that I think everyone uh, can be familiar with, uh, events table. So whenever a user sign up, you have this uh, event type over there. Look at the date. I think this one should be dead time, but let's just make it simple and make it dead. You have a user, you create a new user ID, and then you create a new event uh, with event type side up. And if that user actually activates in the same days, right? We create another event that called event type activate. This part is very clear, right? So the day, same day conversion rate or activation rate is basically the number of users who size up and activate in the same day. Divided by, divides by number of all users sign up that day. So for example, in this case, well, we have uh, one day who so have uh, two users sign up, but only one activate in that day, that means uh, the, the rate is 50%. So this is very clear. Hopefully it's clear. Now, now then. so 
let's have at least to build this with uh, SQL and DBT. So we create uh, something that makes it easier, a little bit easier to, to work with, called user funnel. We using this sequence, uh, make, uh, and then we, we make a DVD model for this. And uh, the output is something that looks like this. Uh, we have one column that lists all the user ID, and then uh, another column for the site update and the activate date for that users. And now we can use the case when over here to actually signify the, if uh, that user actually activate in the same days at, uh, at he or she sign up. Case when activate that equals sign up, that then one else zero, and then you can do a sum to, to count it. You see very basic equals. There, you, you just sum it, and then, and now you have uh, a table like this uh, with the date on the left, the number of users on that, and the number of activated users. And next, you can just you can just divide that number of activated users divide by number of users, and then you get that matrix that that boss the boss Bob asked before. So, for example, uh, this one is zero point six, or this one is zero point seventy one. Okay, so if you look back, right, it's the whole process. We we keep create new models after models to. To the end, we get this matrix over there. So the whole point of, of all this model is basically that matrix over there. Okay. Alice happy, her work's done. Bob is slightly happy. But then Bob asks for something, slight variations. That one is a same day conversion rate, but I want seven day conversion rate. Number of users sign up and activate within seven days. Now, I think, uh, can you go back to the previous slide, right? So a book for you. <laughs> now, I, if you want to kind of let that seven day things, how are we going to change this? Or where do you start? Which, which one you need to modify? Same day activity. Okay, so this one you need to, to change, right? Yes. And then do you need to change this? Yes. And, and that one also? <laughs> okay, a book for you. <laughs> Okay, next. Uh, okay, as you mentioned, right, we need to duplicate that. To create a slide variation of that one over there, slide variation of this one over here, and the last one also. Exactly as you mentioned. So a book is well deserved. So what exactly is the problem with this approach? This one is very simple metrics, but if possible, you have a, a lot more complex metrics, what happened over here. A slide variations of a matrix requires you to do a lot of rework. And it's also very error prone, right? Because you, you do a slight change over here, over there, and then you, you might miss something. And also it's very time consuming. And this part, I will come back later. What if Bob can self-surf this slide variation without the needs of Alice at all? This is uh, something like, uh, like impossible for, from this approach. We didn't see that is possible later on. Okay, so is there a better way? Uh, hopefully, we have a better way. But let us continue. Well, if you look at this, uh, all these DB models that we created along the way, right? Uh, the key things, the key logic actually comes from the the one that highlighted. Yes, this case went over here. This sum over here. This count over here, and and the end result over there. So the end result actually is composed of, uh, for example, num users is this one. This one comes from this sum over here. Each of this basically is a simple matrix, and then you compose to get to the final matrix. In DBT, models are first class citizen. First class citizen means what? It means you can define models, you can reuse them, you can track the dependency between models through the lineage graph. But what if? What if we can do the same thing for matrix? And then this is what is important, decouple from dimensions. And what does it mean? Can, okay, this one is not DBT syntax. So this one is some syntax I, I made up just to make it clear for, for you to understand. Oh, well, this one is the models with uh, three different dimensions. Uh, next, we have a matrix called number of users. Basically, this is just count number of users over there. 
And then you create something like this metric, num same day, number of same day activation. You basically, you number of user where activate that equals side of that. This pipe over here, pipe operator over here, allows you to compose the logic from, from one metric to another. That means that this metric is built on top of that metric. And then this is the end result. We have a matrix that is basically a, a ratio of two uh, metrics that we built just now. Number of same day activation over number of users. Okay. And how do you query to get the results similar to, to what you do in SQL? You write a query something like this, where you select the dimension side of that, and then you select the different metrics that we created before to have the to, to, to get the exactly same result as this SQL over here. This is the SQL that we, 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 we built uh, in the first part of the talk. But for example, just imagine that you just write this and then this one is generated for you automatically by the tools. How do you feel? So the key insight over here is, uh, you know that in, in DBT or using SQLs, what at the reusability you need, but you have is only tables or models. But if you can, what if you can decouple metrics or aggregations, attractions from dimensions. What are the benefits of this? So this is a sequence when you use model-based thinking, right? model-based uh, mindset. You have something along this line. You model, model, after models, and you to get the end result. But now when you think about from switching from this into a metric-centric thinking, you will only have very basic uh, models and then you build metrics on top of each other, on top of, of the models and on top of each other like this. So when you decouple that metric from dimensions and, and, and using this, it, you, you take less mental effort to write because you don't care about all these uh, different dimensions. You just write the aberrations that you want to calculate. It's more intuitive. Can you go back to, to that previous one? You see over here, right? Um, this one, if you write SQL, you need to do a case when, and you need, to, you need to do a sum of that case when. That is basically a trick for counting. But if you write this, right? Number of user where activate that equals side of that. Does it sound like English to you? A little bit, right? At least it, it feels a little bit more English than, than SQL. Next, please. So the duplication of logic by using, using SQL to write models are minimized. And then this one is very important, flexibility. The dimension can be compiled at runtime instead of development time. Development time meaning that you at least need to write SQLs in development time and then at the end of the day, give it to Bob. But this one means that Bob can combine with different dimensions at runtime. How does Bob do that? We will have that later on. But think about it, sorry again, uh, think about it like from going from C to Python. I'm not sure if you guys uh, wrote C before. All oh, right, of course. Engineering background. So you wrote C, that's for sure. And then you move to my Python. Yeah. So what's it? What's the difference? Like in experience. At least you see you can define a Python. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Python now has time already. <laughs> okay. Now my the point is Python is easy to write, but uh, it's 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 true, it's true also that uh, at least Python now has uh, optional types, but uh, whatever. Like, let's continue. Okay, so seven day activation. This one is the what Bob asked for, right? So we can just write something like this. A number of users where this uh, within the interval of seven days or you, another variation where it's 30 days, you just write something like this. Uh, next. So this one is the variation uh, when you move from, from, from the model-based thinking into metric-based thinking. So 
this one, all the chains are very minimal. First of all, it's very more minimal. Second of all, it's exactly the logic that's required to, to convert this one. There's no external uh, columns or dimension that, that, that is uh, included in here. So less logic application, and, and it's clearer because it is exactly show only the, the, the logic that matters. Next, please. How about something more? How about any end activations? You create metric with parameters. And then you can create new metrics on the fly like this. Or window functions. Any of you here are afraid of window function? I don't know. Hopefully not, right? You know, function is a bit complicated, but uh, it's not that big a deal, right? So over here, we can build a metric and then add window function on top of that metric, something similar to this. All these are, are, are made up syntax, and by the way, just for illustration purpose. Uh, so for this one, for example, I want to, uh, Bob's asked for this change in absolute number of this. So uh, the conversion rate, he, he want to say on the second day, he, he want to have this uh, different bit from the first day, and then the percentage change over there. You just write something like this, and then bam, you got this. Now, how about something a little bit more complicated? Okay, this one is a chance for you to get the book. <laughs> how do you calculate the monthly average of same day activation rate by sales agent for customer in Singapore in 2022? How long does it take you to write this? Two minutes. How do you, how, where do you need to join? Where do you need to, to upgrade? Why do we need to filter? I don't know. Uh, I asked ChatGPT for this. It answered in 10 seconds, but it's wrong. <laughs> so, uh, ChatGPT is not that powerful, you see. Okay, next. So, for example, using DBT, uh, you need to, this one you need to join. You need to, this one has the missing uh, dimension you need to, to join with the, these tables to get something along that line. It doesn't look that complicated, but you need to, to find the right join, where to join, where to do the, the, the all this uh, uh, filtering, uh, where clause to put in. So it's, it's a bit harder than you think. Uh, next, please. Okay, so how about the same thing with metric centric thinking? This one is all the metric that, that we, we, we created before. And now with all these metrics, if we want to answer these questions, what should we do? What do we need to do? Next, please. This is the whole thing you need to write. Five lines of code. Select sales agent average. This one is the metric that you define before. And then this one will turn it into a monthly. And this one will make it average. This one will, will, will add. The buy sale, this one will buy sale agents. This one will be the customer in Singapore, and this one will be in 2022. And the output is there. And then this one you write it five, five, five lines of code. And you don't need to worry about joint. Okay. And just now I mentioned about self service, right? With something along that line, right? It's not very hard for you to build a UI on top that looks something along this line. Why you can have a metric. This one is drop down metrics. You choose the metric that already uh, defined by the analyst. You choose the, the type of uh, aggregation. You add in this uh, daily, monthly, weekly, the time grain uh, calculations. You choose the group by over here, and then you choose the filter by over here, and then you get something along that line. This, this is not holistic, by the way. We are not, I'm not selling holistic. So, so don't worry, this one is just uh, made up examples to show you when you move from, from model based to metric like how your life can change. Okay, so next please. So chat GPT, everyone is, is excited about chat GPT, right? So you want to type something like this to get your result. Give me average monthly conversion rate of each agent in Singapore in 2022. And then the system 
automatically generate this query for you. And this query generate SQL for you to get that output. So for example, this one will be mapped to this, uh, the action will be mapped to this part. The conversion rate is already the metric that we defined. And this one is the monthly part, exactly the same as uh, I explained before. So uh, I'm not sure if any of you have tried chart GPT to, to generate sequence or analytics before. What's your experience? My own experience is uh, it works like it generates something that looks correct, but it's not correct. And then you need to, to, to jump in and then scan it and then try to debug it to see where it's, it's, where it's wrong, it's, where it's right. So when you have something like this, when you have a metric like this and you have the queries system like this, you can encode all the constraints in that semantic layers. So ChatGPT job from generating this to this is much easier than from this to SQL. And it's going to be much, much more accurate. The reliability even comes from, from like 50% to 95% to 99%. I don't know, this one is just a speculation, but it makes sense that this, the reliability output can be much better. So what is an ideal semantic layers? It provides a high level abstraction that available with SQLs, which saves effort, reduce error, and enable self-service interface. The key insight from, from this metric layer or semantic layer is that the metric can be decoupled from dimensions. And then the dimension can be provided during query time instead of hard-coded during development time. And the second thing, the metric can be composed from existing metrics. So you build one metric on top of each other's. And the last thing over here is that uh, it needs to be joy aware. So it can work on multiple models instead of only one single model. So if you try DBT, um, semantic layers, um, query is only work on one single model. So this one is not there yet. Okay, next. Uh, this one is from uh, ThoughtSpot. Have you, have you guys heard, heard of ThoughtSpot? It's the BI tools, uh, like unicorn, billions, uh, valuation, something. Uh, this guy uh, uh, wrote uh, about these six types of metrics. So we have simple aggregation, like some revenue, average price, and things like that. Combine aggregate with scalar function where right? users combine. Like combine metric to metric, like metric A minus metric B minus metric A divided by metric B, or metric that requires joy. This one is uh, joy aware, the thing that I mentioned just now. This one is the window function, is we also uh, show you just now, uh, with multiple level of details. Oh, this one is uh, interesting. Uh, you guys should know Tableau, right? So this one is the metric that actually combined with these dimensions. But actually, it's also combined with this one, side update over here. So this aggregation is the one inside uh, combined with this dimension, but the one outside is combined with these dimensions. So it's, it's multiple level of aggregation. It's, it's, there's a lot of, uh, of use cases that, that have requires you to have metrics that combine with different levels of uh, dimension at different level. So in Tableau, it's called level of details. In ThoughtSpot, it's called aggregation level or something like that. Uh, in Power BI, it's called filter context. Filter context and row, filter context, yes. Uh, I'm not like expert in Power BI, but I, I think it's, it's something like that. So that is multiple level of details and the last one is multi-fact metrics. Okay, so all of these, some of these are available, available in, 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 in mix or established BI tools like like Power BI, Looker, ThoughtSpot, uh, Good Data, Tableaus, and things like that. But it's not available yet in, in DBT. Uh, so, yeah, yes. Okay, next, please. So just now the different uh, BI tools that like this guy have uh, different levels of capabilities, but they're locked, the key part over here is that they lock inside these proprietary black boxes. You, they don't provide that well API looker. I think they provide Power BI, some, some sort of API. 
but they're locked inside these proprietary black boxes. Uh, independent and open semantic layer are the futures, but their capability are still quite limited. So hopefully these layers will grow in the future to, to improve their capabilities. And, and uh, within, I think, the next two or three years, the, the, the analytic landscape will change a lot due to this guy coming out. Okay, so this is summary already. Uh, I just show you what's, uh, okay, actually over here is not right. Let us go back to, to something, uh, something I asked earlier. What exactly is semantic layers? I, I haven't answered the question right through this talk. So you guys, after this, after uh, watching or listening all this, uh, do you have a better understanding or, or do you have a better definition or description of, of semantic layers? Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm from Vietnam, and in Vietnam, the teacher will do something like this. If you know one volunteer, I'll volunteer for you. Anyway, uh, my gun, <laughs> okay, so abstract layer over matrix, right? Actually, uh, I have mentioned uh, different vendors are defined differently. Basically, everyone would say that there will be abstraction over your, your analytic logic that allows you to do something that is much easier or nearer the business the thinking along the line. The actual detail is that you, you can define metric, you can define, uh, define um, dimension like DBT, or you can define joy relationship between models and things along that line. Uh, personally, I think uh, semantic layers have, have uh, it can be much more powerful than that. So with ChatGPT, ChatGPT coming in, and then you have, uh, uh, if you have, a, if you can build something that is even high level than that, than that, it's going to be a game changer for sales service analytics. Anyway, so let's come back to the summary. So what I have introduced just now is that that current approach calls the applicated effort low reliability and mm, impossible for sales service. The new ways of thinking is an idealized one that has something like metric-centric thinking. Okay, so it provides a solid foundation of scientific analytics. And then uh, uh, landscape and future direction I, I has uh, just mentioned. Yeah, I think that's all for, there is some reference that, that actually inspired this talk. This is too uh, very good. I think uh, I recommend you to, to read this. Okay, I think uh, that's all. Thank you.